Welcome everyone to One Quarter or Less. Here is part two of our interview with Bob Alejo. If you didn't get a chance to check out part one yet, just click on the video right next door here in this section. You worked at you know the highest levels, collegiate, NCAA, Major League Baseball, you know, US Olympic Committee, you've been all over the place, multiple different sports. Uh, if you could bottle two to three qualities, characteristics, things you've learned in what you said, you know, four decades of doing it on a really high level. If you could bottle those and send them and push them out to everybody, all the young coaches out there, what, what over the years, what have you learned? What's made you successful in all of those different worlds for so long? Well, I'd say first it would be the, the uh, gracious, very gracious sport coaches and athletes that have enabled me to do that right mm -hmm. um and the sport coaches i'll give you an example ziggy schmidt you know uh rest in peace he was a guy who was already accomplished in soccer when i got to ucla in 84 and he took me under his wing and allowed me to do literally whatever i wanted to and i'd really never worked with soccer before but this guy had no reason to do that to a a, a first-time coach who's come into a, a team that's already had a history. Right. Um, but he taught me, you know, he, he, he taught me conditioning and strength and conditioning without him actually knowing anything about it. You know? So, yeah. but he, it was him bringing me in tight like that, you know, uh, Tony LaRusso was the same Barry Weinberg, the trainer at the time in the A's when I first got there in 93 was the same. They, they were, they were gracious, you know, and they, because they had one thing they wanted to do. They wanted us all to be good. And um, so, I mean, that, that might lead me to my first thing, right? You know, there's a difference between going to an organization that lets you do your work than an organization that helps you do your work. So mm -hmm. a lot of people say, oh, these guys leave me alone and let me do my thing. Okay. You know, I mean, that's good. Um, better to do that than other alternatives but the A's helped me. Every one of those guys helped me learn the big league environment and attitude and personality and all the dynamics. They, you know, Barry Weinberg, my athletic trainer, the way I, the way I kind of give you the visual is he was in front of me with a machete knocking down all the vines and everything that I was going to run into. Mm -hmm. And I never ran into any. Mm -hmm. um, and so go to a place that not only going to let you do your work, but will help you do your work. Now you'll be able to see the fruits of your work. You know, it's, it's sad to see places that, that, that still exist, you and I know it, that are telling people without subject matter expertise, telling those with the subject matter expertise what to do. That just doesn't make any common sense at all uh, in any business, let alone ours, yeah. right? So the, the A's were fantastic. And, and I say that to, to, to also punctuate that Tony La Russa doesn't know all that much about strength and conditioning. But what he told me one time was, look, I really don't know what you do, but you wouldn't be here if you were the best. He just jumped right out at it because he trusted Sandy Alderson. He trusted the, the president and GM at the time. He trusted Barry Weinberg, right? He didn't say, oh, I wonder if they're doing their job, you know, that kind of stuff. Like he, the, the good organizations let people do their job and they stay in their area, it's not that they don't contribute to other areas, but they don't demand anything out of other areas, right? Mm -hmm. So the first thing I would say is go to a place that helps you do your job, not just let you do your job. And I also would also say what you spoke of earlier, just, you know, you, you want to go out and continually learn. And I think probably a, a more specific way to, to say that is, you got to keep looking at other stuff. doesn't mean you need to do it. Like you said, right. Just if something pops up and you hear about it, it doesn't hurt you to go look at it. Mm -hmm. It may, you may just go, Whoa, you know, like, you know, so, um, or any kind of method or principle, you know, always look at that just in case, you know, I mean, there's, as you know, you and I know there's a lot of crap out there that, that people are just ponying up to and thinking it's it. Yep. And, you know, a lot of fads, th those don't last they don't make people better. Right. So mm -hmm. I, I would say along those lines, number two would be social media drives a lot of things right now. And I think, in fact, I know that social media in and of itself, not any one thing 
has a, a chance to bully you into doing something that everybody else is doing just because of that, right? Yeah. And I've said this to, at conferences, and I think it particularly affects younger, I shouldn't say younger, less experienced coaches when they do this, because they look at this and they see all this stuff, right? And they think, well, I got to do that. I got, I mean, everybody's doing that and everybody's, I got to do all that, right? I got to do all that or, or Bob Alejo or Jesse Wright are going to think I'm not very good. Like, you know, I'm not doing that. So then, then they start doing that. And I say, no, no, if you stick to the fundamentals of science and uh, best in common practices, you'll be fine. You know, how you take that science and apply it's different not how you interpret the science, it's what the science is telling you, and then put it into play, then in fact, front squats for you might be better than back squats. That's fine, as long as you have a reason why you're doing that, a good reason, but it not don't do it because the overwhelming majority of social media is showing you that's the case. So I think there's a little bit of bullying there, you know, that you have to be careful. Stick to what you know is true. You got the papers, measure and manage. Don't just do stuff to do it measure and manage it so that you can give the actual intent of of why you've implemented something because i think that sometimes the hardest question for some coaches to answer is why are you doing that and that shouldn't be a hard question to answer sure right mm -hmm. so just i think those three things are, are are would be good right stick to what you think is right make sure you've you know you can you can foundationally represent that I mean, it's hard to say this works when it doesn't and you have information that shows that it doesn't work. Right. Again, it's not you, it's them. Yeah. Um, I think that that's three pretty good things should help you out that I, that I look back and I, and I think I'm still continually doing right. Yeah. Without a doubt. That's um, you know, you to use the term bottle, right. There's so much good stuff in your answer right there. I think you might well, need more than a, more than a bottle. We might have to grab a keg or something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, great analogy. Great, but that that comes from four decades right um, yeah sure. yeah so so that's about all we have time for bob where, where can people okay. find you online oh gosh i'm at coach underscore alejo on twitter and i think i'm a coach bob alejo on on instagram i'm not sure i don't spend a lot of time you know i don't take a lot of photos and stuff right so it's it's hard for me to do the instagram thing i probably should do a better job at that um, but I like to hop on Twitter every now and then because I think there's some things that could be helpful. And I'm, I'm always up for a good debate every now and then. So yep. and the other thing I like doing is just busting myths. I just love that. <laughs> you know, so and, and they're easy. It, they're easy to do. You know, you yep. just look at it and ask the question, why? Watch people fumble around and say, that's what I thought. <laughs> sure. So, pretty, so, pretty, uh, good, pretty good litmus test, right? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think so. I mean, all the people that I trust, young and old and you know, I mean, I guess if I was to add a fourth thing to that thing, it just, you just reminded me of one, like, you know, uh, talk to people, man, talk to people, have mentors. And my mentors now are anywhere from 22 to 82. Mm -hmm. I mean, these, there's some smart young dudes out there. I'm not going to let that go. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to pile on that as well. So don't, don't be afraid to, I always say, don't tell me that young people don't know what they're doing when you ask your son to help you operate your phone. Mm -hmm. So absolutely. <laughs> they know something they, they sure do and the, the level of preparedness of many of the young practitioners that are coming out of even undergrad at this point and everything is radically different than it would have been 15 20 oh. 25 years ago the courses they're taking and just the access to information online that they take it upon themselves to learn it's really impressive yeah agreed agreed yeah good stuff bob thank you so much for coming on i appreciate the time yeah thank you it was great all right talk soon